Amen. It's good to hear some old-fashioned music this morning. Amen. Good to see all of you this morning. Good to see our friends with us today, family and friends and uh, new best friend, all, all you here today. It's so good to have, to have you with us. And, uh, we certainly, our hearts are a little bit heavy today, a lot heavy. We, uh, the loss of Paige uh, Jackson, we, uh, she passed this morning early and, and uh, got a call about 6.30. And uh, we know she's gone to be with the Lord, but certainly it's going to be an empty spot in our hearts for her. She's just such a, such a treasure. The short time I got to know her, many of you knew her a lot longer than I did. So please be in prayer for the Jackson family this morning. Do we have any other announcements when you lift up? Yes, next Sunday's spring forward. So what does that exactly mean? We're going to clock up two hours, so you'll be here on time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let the <laughs> Boy, I just feel the love already this morning. <laughs> So we move it up an hour? Yes, spring forward. So instead of being nine, it'd be ten right now. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna okay. I'll have to go to bed at seven o'clock and get up. Okay. But we uh, don't forget, I have seen and I haven't done it, but I have seen I might do it now after I said this, but I have seen preachers that show up and they're just sitting there and nobody's there and then they get there late or whatever. But uh do lift your lift that up this morning and daylight savings time. It's in your bulletin, don't forget. Uh, second Wednesday each month, 10.30, is be our uh, March 13th, to be our next rifle opportunity to go and serve. I know Tammy got to go last time, her and Miss Pat, and they really enjoyed it, so I hope that we some more maybe help out. Any other announcements? No, but we've had a lot of sadness. Sadness at our family this week. My granddaughter that's getting married in three weeks. Future husband's father died late Sunday. So sorry. He was 54 years old. Oh my goodness. Remember your family and their family. Anyone else? If not, let's uh, begin our service this morning uh, by turning to number 420. Breathe on me, breath of God, number 420, and uh, let us stand, those that are able. <laughs> creeds in unison, let us join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn is number 57. Let's remain seated on this one. Yes. 
take time now to continue our prayer concerns. Certain will lift up uh, Paige's family, Danny and Sam and Laura and all their extended family. Uh, are there others we need to add to our prayer list today? Yeah, his name was um, Daryl Britt, so the Britt family. Daryl Britt. And Joe Schlockman's family. Joe is not doing good from what I understand. He's okay. old now. She's home. Oh, is she home? Is she home? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's a blessing. Bless you. you put a message on Facebook. Thank you. I haven't been on Facebook. <laughs> uh, Bruce Brooks. He may be still on our prayer list, but he has a little concern now. And Juanita Wood. Juanita Wood, okay. I understand Miss Francis Moore. Oh me. No, I haven't heard that one. I knew she She has had such a time in the last month. Miss Francis Bourne. No, I've been gone at St. Louis thing, so continue to pray for Todd. He's doing physically good, but he will not try to walk again. The mm. therapist are working so hard. I think he's scared. Yeah. And but I've come in my heart, if the Lord sees fit for him to never walk again, maybe that's a way of keeping him Right, safe. right. And continue, and continue to pay pray for my sister. She's no longer eating and taking very many liquids. Is she, where is she at still? At the North Northbrook. Okay. Let's keep her in our prayers. And I had the joy. I had my eye surgery Thursday, and everything went great. Not looking any skinnier? Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. They are working. See, they work good. Ira had skin cancer taken off of his other ear, so he's going to have two matching ears now. <laughs> <laughs> They're making him an appointment to come back and get that taken off. Hemi Clifton can exchange. <laughs> Anyone else? He all the families at the river that they've lost. Oh, yeah. All sorts of stuff. It's just amazing. I can't imagine what it looks like. Mm -hmm. so. Whole houses floated down the river. It's crazy. Boat docks. Yeah. We were there years ago, you know, and had the other flood. I was there when that other flood was so big. The 100 year flood. Evidently, it's 100 years again, but. But it was bad then. I can't imagine what it's like now. Anyone else? Please be in prayer for our church. We always want to lift up our heart church in general and uh, pray for our worldwide church. Anyone else? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you today with uh, heavy hearts for those that we have lost. We lift them up each day. And we ask, dear God, that you be with families and loved ones who are left behind that are in need, Lord, of something to help, Lord, fill this emptiness in their heart. And Lord, we found that the only thing that can really fill that emptiness is your love and your grace and your mercy and your presence. So we call upon you today. Lord, we also pray for the sick and afflicted. Uh, we have a list here, Lord, that continues to grow each day. But in that list, Lord, we know many have been touched, many have been moved by your presence. And we pray, dear God, to continue to touch them. We pray for our church, our church in general. We pray for United Methodist Church and decisions that we make as we go forward to serve you. May, Lord, we continue to be open to your will. And God, we thank you for every person that's here today. We pray, Lord, your presence in their life as they go forth to serve you. And now, Lord, forgive us of our many sins, our wrongdoings, and our, our sufferings that we go through, Lord, because of our own sake. And now, Lord, as we pray together, let us pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our ushers to come now to receive our morning offering. Dear God, we lift up these gifts that we have before us, that they might be used for your kingdom and for your work. We pray, dear God, to bless the gift and the giver. We thank you for all we have, all we see, and all we're able to give. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs> Seemed like a month, but last uh, week, uh, the St. Louis to the 2019 General Conference, I was one of the reserve delegates. And uh, it was an honor to serve in that capacity, but also it was uh, very stressful. A lot of decisions were made, uh, just a lot going on. If any of you followed me on Facebook, we tried to share as much as we could. But I don't think you could really get the full impact unless you were there. But it was uh, a very divided conference. It was. Uh, very stressful and uh, I'm still, as I say, I've still got jet lag from, from being gone because it was a very stressful time. Uh, I was not on the floor making the votes, but I was in the congregation trying to understand what was going on. So I want to share with you just a little of that before I go into my message today because I think it's important I give you just a little recap of what went on uh, so that if you do have questions later, maybe we can talk about it. Um, this was called a historic uh, time it was a uh, because it was a special called session general conference which never happens and so I think maybe one other time uh, and this as you know the general conference is our highest governing body of the church and so this is very important about setting the uh, discipline of the church uh, it went on from February 23rd to 26th at St. Louis and the, the purpose of this meeting was to uh, seek a way forward on human sexuality uh, deciding whether or not uh, that we would ordain uh, those of the LBGTQ A and I. Now, there's more letters I can keep up with, but community and that God and in God's good design and sex relations uh, are from heterosexual marriage. And so we was trying to decide this how we would uh, go forward. And so here's what happened. Uh, as the tensions have grown in the last few years, uh, there have been several that have come out openly breaking the rules that have been banned about uh, same-sex, self-avowed, practicing homosexual ministers uh, that were forbidden from doing this in our congregation, but they were breaking the discipline. And so this was uh, a way to try to stop all the brokenness and find a way forward. As many of you may have heard, the bishops presented a one-church plan uh, which would have basically divided up churches where uh, we'd still be connectional, but we could decide whether or not each church wanted to do uh, same-sex marriages or ordain uh, clergy. Uh, but this is what happened. As the competing purport, uh, proposals, the general conference were taken our denomination in a very different direction because one of them was brought up, the one church plan was defeated. It wasn't even brought before the, the main board. Uh, but the traditional plan, which main, maintain our current position and increase accountability for clergy leaders, was passed. Uh, we found ourselves facing one unusual barrier after another for many months ahead of time. And through much of the final day, it looked like it was really impossible to pass anything and maybe come out with zero effect. 
but at one point this afternoon, in that afternoon, uh, even one leader from the other caucus, the Liberal caucus, said that they would do whatever they could to block anything traditional plan. But the conference did pass the majority uh, of the delegates defeated the one church plan. They made it where now it's not only uh, part of our discipline that stayed the same, but also there's some teeth in that discipline now that says if you break this, you can be removed as a pastor. Uh, we also passed an uh, exit plan where if uh, the churches at some point see that they can no longer in good conscience remain United Methodist, that they'll be able to pull out of the conference. Uh, but none of this will go in effect until January 1st, 2020. And there's still some legality things that we've got to work on. Uh, some of this was passed through the Judicial Council. It was not constitutional according to our church constitution. And that will have to be worked out. Uh, but right now, everything stayed the same, except there's a little more enforcement for those who break the rules of the church. Um, and they do have the exit plan. So that's just a brief explanation of what happened. Uh, there's a lot more to it, and I'll be glad uh, another time if you want to ask, ask some questions about that. Uh, it's hard to do all that on Sunday morning. Uh, but it was a very important time when the church chose to remain scripturally uh, founded. And I know it broke a lot of hearts on the other side, uh, and there was a lot of emotion. There was a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming. I mean, a lot of going on. And uh, as a boy from Benton County, that was a lot to see, I just tell you. You know, I'm not, I'm kind of isolated. I had no idea how isolated I was. I thought I was a world-renowned preacher, but I'm not. Uh, it, was, it was different. And uh, I could feel your prayers because I, one thing I am, I am very, very vocal if I disagree with something, especially at a certain point. And I had to sit still, and that was hard. I mean, it's hard for me to sit still any time. But I know I felt your prayers, and I just want to say to you, thank you for letting me go and do that. Uh, there was a lot going on. And there was a lot of divisiveness happening on both sides. Uh, but in the end result, we did pass a traditional plan. And the church, your rules are staying the same, except that there is a little more accountability uh, for bishops and for uh, clergy. So be praying about that. Pray for one another that uh, we can somehow remove this divisiveness among us and that we can be the church God wants us to be. Amen. Now let's, uh, let's focus our hearts and minds toward uh, God's Word today. And, uh, as I begin to read to you from Luke uh, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36, and also 37 through 43. And let us hear God's Word. And it came to pass about the eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, James, and John. John and James went up to a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, there were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake in his decrees, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory, and two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, they departed from him. Peter said to him, Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. And not knowing what he said, while he thus spoke, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared, and they entered into the cloud. And there was a great voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days of these things which they had seen. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. Behold, a man from the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and suddenly cry out. And he teareth him from his foam of mouth, and bruised him, hardly departed from him. And I besought thy disciples to, ca disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring me your son. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered everyone all these things, what Jesus did, he said this unto his disciples. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When's the last time you recognized Jesus? 
I mean, you actually saw something or someone remind you of Jesus. You saw a familiarity that thought you, made you think about the way Jesus works in your life. You imagine that these who were called up in a place after eight days of Peter, John, and James, and they went up to a mountain to pray, and then the, the imagination they had of all of a sudden they hear this, this voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And they begin to recognize who Jesus was. Sometimes in division, sometimes in brokenness, it's hard for us to see Jesus. We look and we search, but it's hard for us to find him. Because maybe we're looking in the wrong places. Maybe we're looking in the, the wrong situations, the wrong times. And, and Jesus is there all the time. He's, he is our Redeemer, our Lord, our Savior. He is our healer. He is the one that is there for us when no one else is. He is the one we call out that we know that with our voice he hears us. Do you recognize him in your daily life? Are you familiar with him? Do you feel his presence when you're going through your daily steps? Years ago when I accepted Christ into my life, I was... Uh, I had known about Jesus all my life. I had known about him since I was young. I'd heard the preacher talk about him. Jesus, he's your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is give your heart to him and you'll be saved and your life will change. And he talked about how you put off the old person with their deeds and become a new creature. I heard all about him. And I knew in my mind who he was. I had this vision of him. He was this guy that was on the, you know, on the picture. I mean, you know, I looked just like him, right? That was my vision of him. He had long hair. He's kind of a hippie, you know, I thought back then. So, you know, I'd, grow, I'd try to get my dad let my grow my hair out like that. He said, not happening. You know, I just couldn't. I said, I want to look like Jesus. He said, you ain't Jesus, so. But I had my visions of what he looked like. I heard about him walking on water. I've heard about him healing the sick. I heard about him touching the lame. I heard about him making those who couldn't speak to speak and those who couldn't hear to hear. I heard about all those things about him, but I really didn't know him. And I'm not sure if he walked in my presence, I could recognize him. Until that day, when I knelt beside my bed at my college dorm room at Bethel College. And in that messy room, in that cluttered place, I called out to Jesus and asked him to come into my heart. And when he came, I recognized him. I recognized him. I recognized his touch of healing. I recognized his voice of compassion. I recognized him as the one who was the preacher talked about all my life. I really knew who he was, not because of what I thought in my mind, but what I felt in my heart. I recognized him. And I could hear God saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. We get so busy in the world that sometimes we let a lot of other voices speak to us. And, and we think we know what Jesus looks like. We think we know what Jesus feels like. But until we allow him to come completely into our hearts and our minds and our hearts become as one, then it's hard for us to recognize who Jesus really is. We try to find Jesus in a lot of different ways. We try to find him in substance of the world. Some do it through an addiction. Some do it through wealth. Some do it through power. But Jesus comes not as a great warrior, but as a meek and humble servant. And it's hard for us to recognize. I can't believe that's Jesus who's working in the fields. I can't believe that's Jesus who comes as a servant. I was looking for someone else. But God speaks to us when we humble our hearts and said, this is my son. Listen to him. Went to a birthday party. Not birthday party, but a Valentine's party at one of the nursing homes the other day. And I saw this woman across the the aisle there and she kept looking at me and I, that happens a lot for me okay I don't know why but women are always looking at me I don't know what it is I don't know if they never see anything like me or what you know? it's not that I, I promise 
But she was looking across, and I reckon I was trying to look away, but she kept staring at me. And I, I thought, I know her from somewhere. We walked close to each other, and, and, I, and I, when I, she walked close to me, I recognized who she was. She was my neighbor, who I had been to see a couple of times when we lost one of the cats, and I'd go over there and ask her if she had the cat. And one time she did. She had Charlie one time for a week. And I, I remember from that, it, but I, she was out of place, and I was out of place. And finally, when the light bulb came on to her, she ran over, and she goes, I know who you are. And I said, I know who you are now, too. And she said, well, we were staring at each other, and you kept looking away, and I was trying to figure out who you was. I said, well, I just felt a little uncomfortable you were staring at me so much. And she said, you're my neighbor. She recognized me. And, and I, I wonder if we're not like that sometimes with Jesus. We see a familiarity of God in Jesus. We see there's something special about Him. We know there's something that we have akin to them, but we're not sure what it is. And then finally, we get close to that, the Lord and Savior that we love, and He loves us, and we see Him face to face, and we say, you're Jesus. I know who you are, and I need you in my life. I think the world needs to see Jesus. Amen? The world needs to feel Jesus. We've heard about Him. We've heard all the stories. We've been taught from a, from a young age all about Him. But at some point we need to have a real encounter with Him. Maybe it's a mountaintop experience. Maybe it's down the valley. Maybe it's somewhere in between. But we need to have that experience where we finally hear the voice of God saying to us, This is my Son. Listen to Him. And we recognize Him when we allow Him in our hearts and He becomes our Lord and our Savior. So I say today to you, as many of you already know and you already live out that life, but maybe someone else needs to see your witness. This is Jesus. Recognize Him. Listen to Him. And follow Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the opportunity to recognize you each day in our life. We thank you for your love and mercy. It reminds us, Lord, that we are undone without you. Thank you, Lord, for connecting our hearts to our minds. And we begin to open our eyes and see you clearly. You are the one who has come. And we recognize you as Lord of our life. If there's one in a day, Lord, that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that during this time they might find peace by recognizing you. And we'll thank you for your word and for your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we come before the table, and I remind you that all are invited to the table. This is the Lord's table. And during this time, we uh, invite you to come and experience the brokenness of Christ that's been given for you. I remind you on that night that he took the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of this. And as often as you do this, do this remembrance of me, the body of Christ. On that same night, he took the cup. He lifted it up and he said, This is my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink of this. My blood shed for you. Take and drink. Today we come and we offer this same gift, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May you receive it with a heart that's open for forgiveness. May you receive it with love for your brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these elements that they become the body and blood of Christ for us and those who receive them. May we know your presence in these elements, and may we feel fulfilled, Lord, to know that we recognize you in all that we do. And we pray, Lord, that we now bless those that come, enter their hearts of sins and brokenness, fill them with your love and mercy. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to come now as we share.
receive that which you give us and receive it, Lord, into ourselves. And Lord, may we go out in the world to share the good news of Jesus. In your brokenness, Lord, you loved us. In your kindness, you cared for us. Now we go forth to serve you in the name of Jesus. And amen. God has given us. May Lord we take this now as a reminder of your brokenness. We are made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. May go in peace. you all to stand now those that are able turn number 452 this will be our hymn of commitment as we go forth to serve number 452 if you need to come back and pray you're always welcome here at the song
uh, just need to be careful. Okay? Let's pray together. Gracious God, we go forth now to thank you for another day, a time of worship, a time of presence with you. Now be with us as we serve the other churches and as we minister together. We ask Lord, you to do the families we live today. Let us recognize you in our lives and keep you close to our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.